Talking season in college athletics has officially arrived. SEC media days have come and gone. The same with the Big 12. Come Monday, the ACC gets to start all of their festivities. A new athletic season is here. New teams joining the league. What does that mean for the Duke Blue Devils? We'll discuss that and a whole lot more on this fun Friday episode of Locked On Blue Devils. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome on into another episode of the Locked On Blue Devils podcast. My name is JJ Jackson, proud to be your host of Locked On Blue Devils today on Friday, July 19th. We're discussing everything going on in the world of Duke athletics. And with that, talking season has arrived in the college sports landscape ahead of another exciting college football season, a new head coach for the Duke Blue Devils, a kind of a new conference in terms of the teams that will be participating in the league. Change always happening, and we'll discuss that on today's episode with our good pal Steve Wiseman from the Raleigh News and Observer, who's back with us today. If you have not done so already, please be sure to follow and subscribe to Lockdown Blue Devils for free wherever it is that you get your podcasts. Also, make sure you leave us a five-star rating and written review. Watch the show daily on YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Really appreciate all your support over there. Comment down below your thoughts, and we'll be interactive on the YouTube platform as well, and share these videos with your friends. We're on X at LO underscore Blue Devils, and I'm there as well at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore. All right, enough of that. We'll now get to bring in our great friend, Steve Wiseman, who's back with us once again. Steve, it is so good to see you. Uh, July all of a sudden is flying by, man. It won't be too long before these football camps get up and running, and we're going to be back into uh, the heart of another athletics season there in the college sports landscape. How are you? I'm doing well, JJ. It's always good to be with you. Enjoy your show. You do a great job. And uh, yeah, it's a uh, talking season. We're in the thick of it right now, aren't we? We are. We are. And uh, there's a lot of change uh, that is being discussed. There's a lot of change that's taking place because just to remind folks where we were just a few short years ago, it was in talking season that the commissioner of the SEC, Greg Sankey, had to make some remarks because reports were coming out that all of a sudden in a couple of years, Texas and Oklahoma would be joining the SEC. The Big Ten makes subsequent moves. Everybody starts to leave that uh, Pac-12. There's only two schools now out there affiliated with the Pac-12. A couple of them are coming to the ACC. So uh, here we are. It's all actually happening this year, Steve. Yeah, and uh, you know we'll be in Charlotte starting Monday uh, for the uh, the expanded ACC football kickoff. Now it's going to cover four days. Because uh, there's 17 teams now, right? Because Notre Dame <laughs> won't be there. But uh, 18 teams in the conference, 17 teams will be there. Cal and Stanford will make their initial appearance, uh, SMU. Um, so, yeah, it's a whole different world. And, uh, you know, teams are going to be traveling across the country now to play games in conference. Um, Duke doesn't go this year to California. So we'll give a – since this is a Duke-focused show, we'll talk about that. Duke only has to play SMU at home. So that uh, they avoid the long distance this year. But – it's coming. It'll, it'll be here for football and basketball and, and all the other sports, really. That's what we have a, um, a story in the News and Observer um, uh, this weekend, a big a pe- big package we've been working on. It's already online. It'll be in the print edition for the uh, for the old style uh, people that love the print edition uh, about about this very thing, about the new the new ACC. And uh, as the as everybody gathers in Charlotte and kind of what what it means, uh, what impact it's going to have on athletes. We have talked to some. I had a story where we talked to a lot of uh, uh, people from uh, lesser sports, field hockey, that kind of thing, including a, a former Duke field hockey player uh, who, who talked about the frustration with the league and how they didn't really maybe listen to the athletes as they were making this decision. They did it retroactively, but when you're making the decision, it's already been done. So anyway, that's just that's that's a lot of things that are going on in the college sports world right now, right? And they all affect Duke as they do everybody else at the conference. Yeah, I, I'm curious what will happen when the commissioner, Jim Phillips, takes to the podium and he's going to be kind of pestered with several questions, I would imagine. Every conference commissioner who's already spoke so far this summer has been asked to a certain degree about what exactly is going on with Clemson and Florida State and um, their kind of displeasement of the ACC as it currently stands. I think we would be silly not to think the same questions won't be yet asked again of Jim Phillips. What are those kind of big questions or the big talking points 
that you think people that cover this league really want to know come Monday? Yeah, it's, um, you know, uh, this is impacting the league in a negative light. It's cast a lot of uncertainty about the ACC and the other conference commissioners. I mean, Sankey kind of said, you know, we're, we're good where we are. Obviously, we're looking at what happens there. But yeah, and I think that um, I heard out of the Big Ten, there was some talk that people think nothing's going to happen for maybe three to five years. We've got a little bit of a uh, calmness in, in the waters until the TV contracts come up again yeah. or or the ACC gets blown up. If, if the grant of rights gets thrown out by the courts, that would change everything. So that that's what we're going to talk to Jim Phillips about is like where, where his mindset is right now. And uh, I happen to be, uh, have a setting with him about a month ago in Charlotte at a, a Associated Press Sports Editors Convention where he spoke on the record uh, we, and we wrote a story about it. Um, and he said that he admitted this is hurting the league. This, this is a negative thing for the league. This is going on. At the same time, he thinks that they can find peace with Clemson and Florida State. Maybe that's pie in the sky thinking, but I mean, He's got to think that way, right? He's got to move in that direction. He's got to try to to, to mend these fences, get the league in a better position with uh, with income from TV rights and media rights so that Clemson and Florida State maybe want to stay. I mean, again, that sounds like a dream world thinking, but it is a possibility if you can, if you can try to get it all ironed out, maybe they can get this all worked out and uh, a divorce isn't inevitable. But it sure looks like it is, but that's kind of where his mindset is. And I want to get an update from him to answer your question about what people are going to be talking about. That's one of the things that'll come up on Monday, I'm sure, in his press conference is, you know, where's his mindset with Clemson, Clemson and Florida State? They think they've added these extra teams to kind of, in case those two depart, the league will still be strong. So uh, kind of what's the next step in, in this process? Yeah, obviously we, we talk a lot about time frames when uh, you're in this position and you're thinking in the greater sports picture, right? I'm, I'm so used to time frames of when, uh, player X is coming back from an injury when player X is going to make his college decision in terms of recruiting. We're now trying to talk about time frames with the court systems and going through documents after documents after documents. It feels impossible to almost predict when this can be finally put to bed and put the rest. It certainly is. That's the thing. I mean, it's, it's going to be, this isn't going to be done in two or three months. This is a long process. And that's kind of why Clemson and Florida State went ahead and got into the court systems. They wanted to start, start the clock moving because they knew it was going to take a while. And if this if this grant of rights is truly in effect until 2036, you know, each year that goes by, the buyout gets less, right? So you want to, it's just going to, time's going to, going to move and it's going to help solve this. Uh, but it may take five, six, seven, eight years instead of one or two. But <laughs> that's that's where we are. And so it's like it's a hurry up and wait thing right now because the courts are going to take their time. The courts aren't going to rush anything. That's not going to happen. That doesn't happen in the judicial system. So uh, just just be patient and we'll see how this works out. Okay, we're going to get to a Duke focus after our first time out here. But before we get there, we've talked about Clemson and Florida State. We've talked about these new folks joining the league. Uh, another football season is here. Another athletics calendar is here. Is there anything else that you think will be addressed by the commissioner or that people are curious about this time of year, like uh, anything else on that bullet list? I think, you know, well, you talk about future uh, basketball tournaments, sites, yeah. right? Yeah. We don't know where it's going to be beyond next year. Or so, uh, and, and will it move to different parts of the country now that we have a team in Texas, a team in Tubes, California, Fair. Will, will they have, a, will they have a vote? Will they have a strong voice or will it be, nah, you guys can wait. We're staying on the East coast. You got to come to us. That's one thing I think we want to talk about. And then the other spring sports and events like that, you know, we'll, to, to lessen travel on some of these athletes that have to go to multiple events in the middle of the week, miss class, you know, will they have like one site in Texas where multiple teams will come to and play a bunch of like kind of a round robin event to get conference games in in one weekend, things like that. Those are a lot of the questions that are going to be asked. I'm sure on, on Monday. Fair question to ask. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about this new ACC and uh, we've already kind of, dubbed it the the all coast conference as opposed to that Atlantic Coast conference and one might think well is a change going to take place and then I'm reminding myself that the Big 12 never had 12 teams the Big 10 never had 10 teams I, I think we're probably stuck with the Atlantic Coast conference and so we've just got a couple of uh, fun new friends Steve who don't exactly line up ge uh, geography wise 
Unless they sell the name of the conference, like the Big 12's talking about with the All-State Conference, right? So <laughs> yeah. it could be the Bojangles Conference. Anyway, that's, <laughs> we can get off on a tangent on that for a long time. We don't want to take everybody's time. Yeah. That's, that's the fun stuff we're talking about. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, we'll take our first time out. we got to talk a little bit about those Duke Blue Devils when we come back on Locked On Blue Devils. Locked On Blue Devils here today is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, and it's the best time of year to get those tickets. We saw a really fun all-star break this week in Texas, but starting tonight, every Major League Baseball team back in action to close out the second half of the season, and you can find all the great tickets faster and easier with our friends over at Game Time. Game Time is awesome. They've got the best last-minute deals you could save up to 60% off buying last minute seats, not only for sports, but also concerts, comedy, theater events, and so much more. All in prices, toggle this feature so it allows you to see the total upfront so you're not surprised by fees at checkout. You can get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy, and Game Time has the lowest price guarantee, or Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Go ahead and take the guesswork out of buying tickets. With Game Time. Download the Game Time app today, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On College for $20 off. Download Game Time today, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Onward we go. It is a Friday episode of Locked On Blue Devils. I'm JJ Jackson. He's Steve Wiseman. We're talking about ACC kickoff coming up next week in Charlotte, uh, where Manny Diaz will be joined uh, by a couple of players there for the Duke Blue Devils, a first-year head coach now for Duke. Not his first trip to this event as a head coach within the league, but first time representing the Blue Devils. Uh, what are folks wanting to know from Manny Diaz this time of year, Steve, as he gets set for year one? You know, one of the biggest things will be on display in Charlotte. Uh, by the way, they're bringing five players, which is a lot more than they usually bring. So they're trying to yeah. make it more of a, uh, a, a depth event here. But Duke's bringing two quarterbacks. They're bringing Grayson Loftus and, and Malik Murphy. So, um, you know, the old saying, like, if you have two starting quarterbacks, you have none. Right. right. So I don't know if that's a problem. Or, so I'm sure that'll be a question for Manny. You got two quarterbacks here. Which one you know is going to play? Which one's going to start? Everybody assumes it's Malik Murphy because he came here on a big NIL deal from Texas and he wouldn't come here. We thought he wasn't going to play. But, you know, Grayson Loftus started last year at the end of the year, did did pretty well, right? Led him to a bowl win. Um, you know, uh, uh, so he's still battling with Malik Murphy for the job. I think in the end, Malik Murphy is going to be the starting quarterback. But until it's done, that's going to be a big topic of conversation for him. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, you've got two quarterbacks there. If, if this is a new quarterback that you're like to uh, show off to the rest of the league, you'd feel bad for the other guy who's just kind of there and well positioned. But to your point, Grayson Loftus did come in and play so well towards the end of the season. Maybe you're taking a little bit of pressure off of Malik Murphy uh, in a setting like this. Um, uh, Grayson's been the guy who's kind of known the Duke program. Everything's a little bit new with a head coach that has changed and Manny Diaz taking over. But, yeah, this is really strange, Steve. I don't know that I've ever seen anything kind of like this. Talking season, you can never really predict how it's going to play out. And here we are, Duke trying to bring two quarterbacks in front of the, the media. For sure. And, uh, and then there'll be some questions about um, the offensive line, which had to be rebuilt. You know, you lost Graham Barton and Jacob Monk to the NFL. Uh, so you, you had to bring in some transfers there, uh, which they've done a good job of since spring, since spring practice. And they brought in – you know, Bruno Fina from uh, from UCLA, who's probably going to be one of the starting tackles. That was a very important uh, addition in the in the the post spring practice transfer yeah. portal uh, free agency. It's, it's so, yeah. you know, we have the one after the season, and then we have spring ball. And you think you're watching spring ball, and you really, you know, it's going to change again, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and so they, they 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 we knew Zach Franks was coming from uh, Northwestern, another tackle. Who was coming? Uh, we knew he was coming before spring ball, but he wasn't there yet because he had to finish school at Northwestern. And then they brought in Fina from um, from UCLA. Uh, in in he committed in May, so he'll be here. The, he's already here this summer, and so th they needed two tackles and they got them. So that that's a big start there. That's good for them. Uh, but that'll be something we want to talk about because if you don't have a good offensive line, forget it. You got no chance. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, they've got uh, they got to rebuild the, the defensive front because. 
Dwayne Carter's gone. Jamie and Franklin's gone. These are guys that were, you know, major, major players uh, for Duke uh, uh, the last two years of the success under Elko. Uh, so, uh, and defense is Manny Diaz's strength. He's coaching the linebackers, right? So um, we want to see, uh, you know, he, he, he's been a linebackers coach, I mean, in the past. So a defensive coordinator. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, what are his plans there? What, what does he think he can dial up um, from what he has left from what was a really good defense under Elko, especially last season? No kidding. Uh, yeah, with what Mike Elko has done for Duke over the last two seasons, uh, you know, bringing college game day to campus, the big wins that they had to start last year, that fun Monday night win over Clemson, a, a lot of eyeballs were on Duke football over the last few seasons, and you would want that to continue, and here's an opportunity to kind of do that. As people look at Duke and kind of where they're positioned with this coaching change, what does that look like for the Blue Devils? Are they there towards the bottom? Are they a middle-of-the-pack team? Where, where does this Duke football team kind of fit in when you look at the greater picture? Yeah, I think, you know, again, this is a 17-team league now, right? So <laughs> if you're ninth or 10th, you're in the middle of the league. Right. <laughs> and that's that's okay. That'll get you to a bowl game probably, right? right. So right. Uh, I think that's where, you know, Duke should probably – Duke fans should expect them to be and be picked maybe a little lower because there's some uncertainty about – about the coaching change because Elko was so good, and uh, and we knew uh, we, two years ago we didn't know how good he was going to be, but now he came into last season. People thought this team will be really good because Elko is going to coach him up. We don't know about Manny Diaz. He 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 was he did have winning seasons at, at Miami, you know, winning conference record, all that stuff, bowl games. It wasn't like he was an abject failure at Miami. He just wasn't good enough for Miami standards, which is understandable. They got their standards, that's fine. But um, I think um, so. There's there are some questions if he can. Uh, what he can do for them this year, but I think they should expect to be, you know, a team that's going in contention for a bowl with with the with the non conference schedule they have. It's not as tough as last year. Notre Dame's not on there, that kind of stuff, right? We had there were some tough games last year. Uh, they don't have that this year, so um, uh, I think you know you're probably looking at a six seven win team here would be tops, and that and that would be fine. I think that would continue the momentum that that Elko started. You don't want to see a big drop off when yeah. you make a coaching change, so that's where I think it is. I love it. Uh, we're excited to see the Stoop team take center stage in Charlotte next week for ACC kickoff, and we'll see what exactly the conference looks like in the future and hear from the commissioner and all the great coverage. We'll be there with uh, Steve Wiseman and the Raleigh News and Observer. We've got to talk, though, uh, before we get out of here, Steve, a little bit about the Stoop basketball program, a program that folks love so much, and we'll be able to do that after we take one more quick break here on this Friday episode. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much for making Locked On Blue Devils your first listen of the day. Go ahead and make sure you also check out Locked On Sports today. It's our top show uh, within the network where we talk about everything going on in the wide world of sports. 25 minutes each day, giving you the biggest stories that you need to know about. Locked On has also launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. All right, we bring him back in now. Steve Wiseman here with us from the Rally News and Observer. Before I get into any basketball, I, I mentioned what's coming next week in Charlotte, if you will. Tell folks a little bit about the written work, Steve, where they can find it and uh, how they can best support you. Thank you very much, JJ. Yeah, so newsobserver.com is our website. Uh, I mentioned the, the big package we have. It's online now, and it'll be in the print edition Sunday, uh, looking at the new the new fangled ACC and the new world of the ACC. Uh, that's That's been an in-depth package that our reporters have been working on for uh, for a couple of months, that's three, three, four, four stories package. So it'll be a lot of good stuff there. And then we'll get into Monday with Phillips and his press conference early. That'll be something our columnist Luke DeCock and our, our, our feature writer, Andrew Carter, who's been covering this uh, changes to the, to the league uh, extensively. We'll have coverage of that. And then we'll get into uh, Wednesday is when Duke is, is, is up on the docket. So if people listen to this, I'll be down there uh, that day uh, to take care of Duke's coverage. And then on Thursday, uh, Carolina and state have their day. Uh, so uh, again, this is the Duke podcast. So just to tell you the others will be there. We have to cover them too. So yeah, absolutely. And people want to know what's going on with those other guys. That's really important in, in a rivalry. You got to know what's going on 
uh, down the road. So, all right, this Duke basketball team, an offseason of change, one might say, kind of similar to what the conference as a whole is going through. Seven players transfer out of the program after zero the year prior, an incoming freshman class. That's pretty great. It's a uh, transfer portal class that's going to come in and uh, be a nice addition for John Shire and staff. Cooper Flag is in every headline these days. It kind of feels that feels like where are we at with the Stuke basketball program as we sit on July nineteenth, Steve? Yeah, it's really it's really looking strong, isn't it? I mean, you, you talk about winning the off season and what Cooper Flag did at the Olympic practices and really impressed a lot of the, a lot of great. I mean. Kevin Durant and people like that were just singing his praises. So that tells you something right there. But that's the guy that this team is built around. That's why all the changes were made in the offseason was to maximize the one year that you have Cooper Flag and try to win a national championship. And so that's why they brought in Sion James from Tulane and Malik Brown from Syracuse, experienced guys, uh, Mason Gillis from Purdue. Uh, you've got you, you should be a better shooting team. Uh, we've already seen them getting some work done, you know. Um, Come on, Maluach uh, is going to the Olympics with South Sudan, the national team. So he's not on campus right now, but he's a seven-two, uh, you know, just a defensive uh, presence in the in the paint. Uh, the Duke hadn't had, I mean, really, I mean, lively and 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 uh, Mark Williams the last few years they had him, so um, that'll be important. He's back. So uh, Darren Harris had the broken hand, which was a, a scary thing, but yeah. he's already back out working. So that's a good sign. So really, this team is going to go into the season you know, in the top five in the country, I'm confident. And uh, um, there's going to be a lot of expectations. It's going to be a fun season. Yeah, excited to see this team come together with so many changes because, you know, you see the first year again, everybody comes back now. Seven players leave. Uh, Interesting where we're at. But look, we we hear a lot these days of how much college sports are changing. And it sounds as though I know you've gotten to spend some time in recent weeks with Coach Shire himself as uh, honest conversations had to be had with players on the roster. And Sometimes that just results in their time in Durham coming to an end earlier than uh, you might have expected. Correct. And it also shows kind of the, the growth and development of John Shire as a head coach, that he felt this was needed. This needed yeah. to happen, right? It wasn't just writing it out, you know, last couple of years. They had they had good good seasons, good teams, uh, strong teams, but they didn't ultimately get to where they wanted. And last year when they lost, uh, you know, the ACC tournament and the lead eight to NC State, a more a veteran team really, you know, it's kind of kind of stuck it to them, frankly. And Tennessee the year before in the tournament, they saw that's what they needed to do. So Shire was like, okay, we have to make we have to make changes. And it's uh, again, he's more confident in what he's doing just with time. That's naturally going to happen when you're young, taking over from Coach K, right? You're going to ride the coattails a little bit, but now it's like it's time to put his stamp on the program. And this is what he wanted to do, and now we'll see how it works. What what type of hype are we going to – or I, hype might not be the right word, but just the, the year of, of Cooper flag that's coming, what what do you think that looks like? It's going to be similar to, to Zion's team, to Zion, RJ, that that group, I think. And uh, now we'll see if they can, they're going to play Kentucky early, not their first game. Remember that <laughs> team? That right. That team went out and blasted Kentucky the season opener yeah. like a rocket ship. Um, this team doesn't get Kentucky until like the third or fourth game of the season. So, But still – That'll be an early litmus test. But I think wherever Cooper Fly goes, there's going to be, I mean, the, full of NBA scouts, intense media attention. I mean, I'll be at every game like I always am. But um, so it's going to be, it's going to be kind of like a, like, like traveling with a rock star a little bit. Um, so it's going to be fun. What are you excited to learn about Cooper Flag throughout the course of the year? Because you're right. People are looking forward to what this guy could do at the next level, but he's got a year that he's spending in Durham with the Stuke basketball team, have those thoughts in your head started to form, Steve? Like, what what intrigues you most about him? Sure, it has. He he's supposed to be in high school, right? Yeah, that's true. one thing. Very uh, true. Yeah, uh, that's one thing that's that's different. And how is he going to handle when he doesn't have a good game? Because it's going to happen. He's going to yeah. have games where he struggles. It's it's college basketball. This isn't high school or AAU anymore. And so that's always how, how you see how somebody gets knocked down, how they get back up. And I know in uh, just from his time in Vegas at the NBA camp, the first day he was a little bit tentative. I talked to John Shire about that and other people that were there. But then he realized, okay, I could do this. And like the next day is that all those highlights came out of yeah. his practice. So let's see how that goes in a college season. You know, is he going to be as hyped up for a game, a midweek game against, you know, Army or, or one of those games, right? Uh, as opposed to when you're playing Kentucky or when you go out to Vegas and play Kansas or go to Arizona. 
How's he going to handle going to Arizona and playing in that situation in an intense environment when everybody's booing you and on top of your back like that? So he's not really been in those situations before. So these are all things I want to watch early in November and see how he adjusts. And, and how the whole year plays out, right? And then you get into those big – he mentioned his uh, affinity for Duke throughout his life, and now he gets to take part in college basketball's finest rivalry and try and create some of those March Madness runs and that sort of thing. Well, Steve, the time has certainly been uh, greatly appreciated today. Really happy to get you back on the podcast. One more time, if you will, remind folks where they can see all your great work. Yeah, you can follow me on X at Steve Wiseman NC, as you see there on the screen. I appreciate that for those that are watching on YouTube. Uh, then newsobserver.com is our website, and uh, uh, that's where you can catch everything that we do. And then make sure you check out the Believe in Duke podcast, right? Great work coming that's as right. well. With me, me and Sheldon Williams, the landlord. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we'll, we'll be uh, getting that going again. We took a little break for the summer, but we're going to get back going. We're mostly basketball-focused, so uh, we're going to get going here when, when, the, when the guys get around school and there's practice and stuff to talk about. But, yes, thanks for giving us a plug on the Believe in Duke. Absolutely. Combined, the two of you are towards the top of many records in the Duke <laughs> basketball world, Steve. Combined, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. Well, Steve, we'll do this again sometime soon, okay? Very good. Thanks, JJ. All right. That's Steve Wiseman joining us on the show. And what a fun show that was. What a great end to this week. Coming next season, it's talking season in the ACC. That's going to do it for our show here today. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you on Monday. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.